Hi, I'm Dave Hillowitz. So today I want to sample something a little unusual. Today I'm going to sample this. Um, it is a Chantal tea kettle. If you're not familiar with them, they were really popular about 15 years ago. You used to see them on the set of a lot of TV shows. Now, not so much. The reason I want to sample it is because uh, when this tea kettle boils, it whistles and it whistles in a very specific way. The reed in Chantal tea kettles was actually made by uh, the Honer Harmonica Company. Uh, so I thought it'd be a cool thing to sample. It's kind of unique. And also, uh, I'm going to try to capture some of the other sounds that this thing makes, like you get that kind of cool, like steampunky sound. I think it's going to be a really fun sample to work with. And it's also a perfect opportunity to talk about release triggers and release samples, because uh, that's a topic I haven't really talked that much about in my videos. So um, yeah, let's get started. Okay, so I've got my samples and I'm ready to make my contact instrument. Um, I sampled the actual um, reed from the uh, Chantal kettle. Okay, we don't want to listen to too much of that. It's a little bit loud. Um, and I also sampled the opening and closing of the, the little lid. And here's what that sounds like. So because I only have uh, a single note to work with here, I'm going to be relying on those opening and closing sounds to provide a kind of percussive element and maybe make it a little bit less monotonous because otherwise we're just going to be playing the same audio file over and over and over again. Okay, so let's get started. First, we go into our render dialog and okay, I think we're ready. Okay, so we've rendered out our files and here they are. I can close this window and we're ready to open up live. And I've already got an instance of contact running. New instrument, always an exciting moment. And I am going to, first I'm going to pull in the actual note, which is this. And we have to figure out what note that actually is. So I'm going to pull in G Tune, which is, I think, the plugin I usually use for tuning. Okay, we've got our tuner up, uh, and we're going to hit the note. Okay, it's an A. Wait, let's go back to that. It's about 30 cents sharp. And I'm gonna make a note of the frequency also. Okay, it's about 220 hertz. So I actually have a spreadsheet because I look this information up about once a week and it was just such a hassle that I made my own spreadsheet. Uh, and that is A257. So I am going to just type the number 57 in there and So there are actually two notes in there. There's like the main note and then there's like a kind of subtle other note. Maybe we'll see if we can't get rid of that because it's kind of annoying. Um, but okay, for, for now we've got, our, uh, we've got our pitch. It's pretty cool as a low. Okay, how high can we make it go? Ooh. That's the absolute highest I could possibly imagine somebody wanting to hear that note. Nah, let's go down an octave. Okay, so we've got our basic patch and it sounds pretty cool, but uh, it's really boring because it's just one file uh, being played over and over and over again every time we hit a key. We can close this now. So we're gonna make another group and we're gonna use those um, open and close uh, samples to make it more interesting. So first I'm gonna name this group just uh, base note or something like that. And I'm going to make a new group. I'm going to call open and make sure we're only editing this one group. And I'm going to go back to the finder and I'm going to pull in my open sample. And okay, so I've pulled in my open sample. So there's an annoying thing about this, which is that my open sample is being pitched. Uh, as uh, I, you know, I've set a root key, which is, uh, I guess, um, a B flat. And uh, every time you play a different note, it's 
it's pitching the note up and down. And that's not what I want. I want that sample to play back um, verbatim, regardless of where on the keyboard I'm hitting it, because that's not the melodic element of this. The bass note is the melodic element. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to the group settings here, and I'm just gonna uncheck this tracking. Tracking is basically whether or not um, the playback of the sample in any way matches the uh, pitch value of the MIDI signal coming in. So if you turn off tracking, basically it's always gonna play that sample back exactly on pitch. It's always gonna sound the same, and that's exactly what I want, so. Maybe a bit loud, maybe let's uh, take it down by six decibels. Okay, so obviously that still sounds pretty monotonous, and that's why I recorded four of these, and we're gonna make round robins. But before we do that, let's get to our release trigger. So um, not only do I want a sound to play when I hit the note, I want a sound to play when I let up on the key. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a release trigger. I'm gonna duplicate my open group, I'm gonna call it close, get rid of that sample, and I'm gonna drag the first close sample in, and I'm gonna do that same thing where I uncheck, oh, I don't need to uncheck tracking because I duplicated the group and it already has it unchecked, uh, and uh, yeah, but it doesn't matter. Of course, ultimately we're gonna want these ranges to match There, we're making them match perfectly. Okay, so that sounds really cool, except that the close sample is being played right when we're starting the note. So what we need to do is we need to set this as a release sample. And the base way of doing this is super easy. All you have to do is go down here and hit release trigger. And it can get more complicated, and we're gonna get into that in a second, but that's the basic way of defining something as being a release, and watch what happens when I play it. Okay, let's go down and put some reverb on this because I think it, it's uh, it's a little harsh. And I'm gonna choose from our presets, and we're just gonna use Long Warm 360, and I'm gonna bring this down. Okay, so obviously this is a little monotonous sounding because we've got one open sample, we've got one closed sample, and we've got one root note sample. What we wanna do is switch samples so that we have a little bit more variety. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna clone these open and closed groups very quickly. Okay, so we've got our groups, now we need to actually populate them with samples. So, we're gonna swap this one out with open three. I'm gonna swap this one out with open four. We're basically just gonna continue doing this. Okay, so we've got all four groups uh, populated and what we're gonna do is we're going to grab all four of these groups and we're gonna do set edit flag for the selected groups and we're gonna look at group start and we're gonna make this cycle round robin. Okay, that seems to have worked. And I'm gonna set the position in the round robin chain. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. Working on these little samples that don't have very many files is always much more fun than working on large ones. Okay, so I've set the round robin groups for all of my open samples, and uh, in theory, if I turn off the mapping editor, I should be able to see all the open ones. Oh, that's a release trigger, we don't want that. Okay, so now if I hit a note, Not bad. Uh, if I turn down the bass note sample all the way, that actually seems pretty good. Okay, so we've talked about release triggers, but there will come a time in your life as a contact developer when you will not want to use contacts built in release trigger system. If you have a bunch of round robins and you're doing some complex thing with triggering, um, it, very quickly you can find that you need to manage um, what groups are playing when yourself in a script. So let's talk a little bit about how to do that. 
So first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to turn off release triggers because if we're not using Contact's built-in release trigger system, we want to make sure that it's off. So now if I play a note, all of the groups are going to trigger. Okay, so let's go into our handy script editor, click edit. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to script the on release event. Um, on release is something that gets triggered anytime you release a note. Makes sense. Okay, so let's get started. It begins like any other block on release and and on. And I'm going to indent everything inside of it. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off all groups. And this is pretty common. Like uh, you'll find we're going to script also another on note block, which is uh, a block that gets called every time you press a note. And we've covered it in other videos, I think. It's a common practice in both on note and on release blocks to turn off all the groups and then turn on the ones you want. That's how you select groups. Okay, so we're gonna call disallow group and we're gonna use a special token, all groups. We hit apply to make sure we haven't made a mistake. Looks good. And now all we're gonna do is we're going to turn on that one group, close. Remember that group numbering starts at zero. so. Even though this is the third group, it's actually group number two. There we go. Now, of course, if I hit a note, nothing really happens because we're not actually telling it to do anything. We're just uh, specifying which group should turn on. Okay, so what we actually need to do is we need to play a note. We need to play that closed sample note. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna call play note. Um, and let's look at the signature for that function. Let's actually just grab this whole thing and then we can kind of work through it parameter by parameter. So the first thing that we're gonna do is uh, specify a note number. Now, in this case, it doesn't matter too much because that closed sample is gonna sound exactly the same if it's C1 or C3. That's specific to this case. We're actually gonna use a special token which is called event note. Uh, and both on note and on release have access to that. And that's basically like the note that got pressed down. So if I press down C3, it's going to uh, set event note to C3. And if I release C3, it's gonna set event note to C3. We're gonna set velocity to event velocity. It's another special token. Sample offset is basically where in that audio file we want it to start playing. In this case, we're gonna look here and we want it to start at zero. We want it to start at the beginning. So we're gonna set it as zero. And finally, duration. You can see here that zero means the entire sample gets played and that's what we're going for. So we're going to specify zero. So here we go, hit apply, and now I'm gonna try it. Okay, there, it works. But there's one problem, right? If you look, look at the groups down here as I'm hitting this key. Did you see that? All three groups, the note group, the open group, and the close group all played when I hit the key. We only want those first two to actually uh, play. Our solution is to actually modify which groups are available to uh, note events. Uh, so we're gonna do that right here. So we're gonna make a note callback. And this is a block of code that's going to get run every time I press down on a key. I'm gonna do that same thing we did before, disallow groups, which basically turns off all groups. So if I were to right now hit apply and press down, it doesn't make any sound at all. <laughs> it makes a sound when I let up on the key, but it doesn't make a sound when I press down. So now we need to turn those groups that we want back on. And the first one we want is the note group, which is group zero. By the way, if you wanna see a list of your groups with the actual ID numbers, you can go to monitor and click groups. And you see here, you have a list of all your groups. It's actually a searchable list if you click here, but anyway, uh, zero, one, two. So you can see the actual ID number that's going to be used behind the scenes. And we want that second group, the open group to also play. So yeah, that's it. That's release triggers. It's as simple and as complicated as that. I'm going to play around with this and see if I can't come up with some cool music. Okay, so I've been playing with this for a little bit and I've come up with a nice UI. Uh, it's got a bunch of different features. Uh, you can control the note level and the um, sub note level, which is uh, an octave below. So basically there's two notes playing. There's the regular note, and then there's the sub note, which is basically the same note, but an octave below. Uh, I've made a few patches. Um, there's the basic organ patch. There's just clicks. 
There is the arpeggiator patch. And there's a new wave bass. And then finally, sort of a keys patch, uh, sort of sort of like a pad, but you know. So yeah, it's a pretty cool instrument actually, um, and it's free. I've set myself a goal of trying to write a kind of like epic cinematic film music thing uh, using only this as the instrument. So uh, yeah, let's uh, give it a listen. Okay, so that's what I came up with. So yeah, that's release triggers. Uh, I hope this was helpful. I'm gonna put a link to the instrument in the description to the YouTube video. As always, if you've been enjoying these, remember to click subscribe uh, so you can be notified when I make more. Um, yeah, take care.